Mic check, mic check. What's going in? Welcome into another episode of the KZ Community Beat. I'm your host, Ross Martinez. And my guest this week in the hot seat all the way from Houston, one of the most successful independent comics in the game. He will be bringing his new comedy special, I Got a Story to Tell, to the Peoria Civic Center Theater on September 14th. All the way from Houston is Ali Sadiq. What's going on, man? What's good, people? What's good? Peoria, the home of the legend, the GOAT, Richard Fryer. What's happening? Yo, I have to ask you about that, man, because as I was doing some research about you, I saw that you started cracking jokes at the Just Comedy Club out on Richmond Ave, and now you're going to be performing at the home of Richard Pryor, like, all these years later. How do you kind of process that as a person? Like, hey, yo, I've had a journey. You know, I've been there before. It's not my first time in Peoria. No, it's not your first time, but how do you process just the longevity of what you've been doing and able to come back and able to do, perform your craft in front of a bunch of people that you've grown since way back then, you know? I, I don't know. I think that uh, 26 years I've been in front of a lot of audiences for a long time, so uh, I'm, a lot of people just now getting familiar with me with on whatever, however they got familiar with me with the internet. But I've been around a long time. So I don't think it's, I don't think about it like other people think I'm not a new guy. So yeah. it's not a processing for me. This is just another show for me. Yeah. I mean, you, you've had a lot of success with these independent shows. As I was looking at the domino effect, part one, two, three, four, collectively you have, almost 25 million people throughout those just on YouTube. And that's not all your other things you've done in the communities that you've been in and telling your jokes, but over four specials, man, 25 plus million, be able to see your jokes. That's gotta just speak to who you are as a performer. Most of more of a business, man, as long as it, this is a business. Um, and, I don't think it's the jokes. I think it's the stories. I'm way past jokes. I haven't told a joke in shit nine, ten years. Yeah. Um, from from this is not. It may be longer than that. From this is not happening to bring the funny to bigger than the two comedy specials on uh, Comedy Central, Def Jam. You know, I don't think I've told a joke in maybe fifteen years. I just keep telling stories separating myself from comics that tell jokes. I don't, my, my style is different from mass majority of people. And yeah, I think jokes are something that can be stolen as you hear mm -hmm. all the time, but people can't really steal your story. They can't steal your life unless you're going to say my mama name <laughs> in the course of you saying my story, in my yeah. story, but <laughs> people steal your demeanor or try to, um, cause you know, Everybody has been to jail for, you know, for some strange reason out of nowhere. And then I switched to a whole different process. Like, I did bigger than these bars, and then everybody thought I was going to show up and start doing prison stories. I'm like, no, got more in the tank than that, you know. And so I don't, I don't really attest it to anything besides gathering fans and building as I as I go, because there's no, like, this is not the end. This is just, this is, this is scratching the surface. After me still 26 years, I'm about to record two more specials in a whole nother series. So I'm not, I'm not like other comics. So I don't get enamored with things. I'm not, I'm not built like this. My, my whole life is different than mass majority. Of I'm not always on stage. I'm not none of that. I'm just, I perform for the when I get there. Yeah. I mean, so it's no, no. performance. So I haven't told a joke in a long time. So I I keep not that it's a it's a big thing for me to constantly say I don't do jokes. Mm -hmm. I do stories. I don't do them. I, I that's I leave a joke telling in the and the talking up under people's skirt and the sex and all that and I leave all that for the other comics. No, um, it's like finding the a, authentic story that thing. you have. Like, you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to tell. It's like with the new special you have coming, or not special, but the tour you bring to Peoria, the I Got a Story to Tell. You're here to tell a journey. And with this new special, what is some of the story that you're trying to get across to the audience as you're coming back to Peoria? Um, 
so let me break it down. The the I got a story to tell tour is not a special. It's just the I got a story to tell tour coming off of the success of the domino effects one two three four. So the the new thing that I'm going into is the um, my special that I'm getting ready to shoot in Dallas is about um, my two sons. Mm. This is the diff- this is the a different perspective between me being a father of two different people at two different times in my life. That I'm a different you know my first my oldest son is 30, my new son is 13. So he is totally different from my oldest son. And my oldest son grew up with me being in the streets. This Mm -hmm. boy, I'm the president of PTA. He has no idea. And so. (laughs) Yeah, that's when you think about the the evolution of Ali Sadiq from time before comedy till now. And now you're the head of the, or you're part of the PTA. Like, does that ever, do you ever sit down and just look at the journey and you're like, wow, I've. I've gone on many different paths in life. Yeah, that's the that's why I'm, you know, in the process of going through a processing of all these different these different levels to this game. Like it's mm-hmm. it's it's so many different levels that you become a different person and you have to grow. And that's that's why I keep hollering, I don't tell jokes because there's no growth in that. It's like if I gotta keep coming up with the current uh, well, I heard a guy say in an interview, "Well, special should be current." Well, hmm. that that's a crazy concept for something special to be current. Because just think, if I would have did a current special, and I would have been, say, if I would have been in defense of Puffy in my special, my yeah. whole special, I was talking about how they was doing Puffy wrong, <laughs> and then three weeks later, the tape come out. Now my whole entire special is irrelevant. Yeah, that's yeah. why it's not current. So for something to be special, it has to be cultivated. In in my opinion, as a as a as a stand up, it has to be cultivated. And this is a a cultivated life now of me being able transitioning from a joke teller years ago to a storyteller, something that's more genuine to me, and that can that can help somebody. You know that that a uh, uh, some a joke in my opinion, doesn't have enough medicine in it. You know, mm. it's like getting a it's like if your if your rib is broke and they just give you some regular Tylenol, but you really need a opioid to help mm. you through that pain. You <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you need you need something with some codeine in it. Like anybody can just, crack a joke, but to be an efficient storyteller and take you on a journey, that's a skill right there. That's that's something that you've cultivated as you said over your years, man. Like being a comic is a path of hard work, I would say. Traveling, finding your groove, handling curveballs, forks in the road. As you grow and you look back and you view these specials and your tours, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you had to get through? What are some lessons you've learned along the way that you could pass on to other people? Uh, um, being ready for the moment. This is uh, It's been some moments that I wasn't ready for that... Um, I was man enough to say, nah, not ready for it. Kind of don't want it because it's not in my skill set yet. And then to come back and actually gain that skill and then be efficient at it is a lesson. Like a lot of guys ask me, hey, can I open up for you in the theater? Mm -hmm. No. No. Because I know that you're not doing well in the club. And to put you in a put you in a theater is to is to sabotage your career because it's a different monster. And you, you know the life lessons of learning how to explain that to people that I'm not I'm not hating on you. I'm just telling you this is a earned position that you have. It takes a lot. And then even with me, you know how easy, so you you um you've seen a comedy stage before, right? Mm-hmm. It's maybe. It may be 10 steps this way, 10 steps that way. That's it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not that big. Yeah. Now I'm in a theater. It is 100 steps that way and 100 steps that way. So I'm doing about three or four miles 
on a stage in an hour and a half oh, you just in movement. Yeah. So the next day, I'm exhausted. At what point did you learn in your journey of being not just a storyteller, but also being a showman on the stage that you're talking about? Like, hey, I have to cover over there. I got to come back. It's about my placement, my footing. Do you also incorporate that into, like, all right, here's here's the gold nugget in the story. Let me make sure I am placed here on stage. Like, those small nuances. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the nuances of the difference. I need to hit different spaces on the stage and I got to be at this place at this time for this to hit. It's more like, this is more like, this is actually theater. This is the, this is the, my background of coming from actual theater, theater Mm -hmm. and blocking and placement. And I need the microphone stand to be, because even with the stand, I'm doing a lot with the stand, the stool and the chair. These are these are a lot of different scenes that I'm setting up. You know, the, the the when I was at the Beacon, this guy from New York Times came. They wrote an article about it. You can read it now in the New York Times. That it's a different. This is like a one man stage play every time I'm on because of how the blocking is with the instruments that I'm using. It's only the microphone stand, the chair, and the stool. But I got to block it off and move it. And, you know, sometimes the mic is a wall. Sometimes the microphone stands a wall. Sometimes it's my son. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's my mom. You know, sometimes it's just this, I got to peek around this thing to 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 sell this part of the scene. Like, even in the storytelling, I, I'm still painting the picture and setting the scene for you. That's what makes it the pacing and it, it's a man. It, I wish this was easy as telling jokes, man. Bro, it's like <laughs> yeah. th- that's why it. I, I don't. I didn't mean to sound so intense from the beginning, but it's like, oh, you good, uh, man. A, a, a joke. To, when people say I'm just a joke, it's like simplifying. Yeah. What I have done because it's different now. Even like if somebody watched Domino Effect two, mm-hmm. I never ran to. I never, I never rehearsed it. I just went out and did it because I know the story. It, I don't have to practice it. This is my life already. But you're just going up there being, being honest. Yeah. Being honest with people. When I didn't know what it was going to be like when I got to that part about to, about my sister, and had no clue on how I was going to come out of it. Huh. It was just done, and in the and you just put it in the creator's hand, hey man, just guide me through this because this is painful. This is this is this is something different. And then I gotta get out of it to tell the rest of the story. But how do you it it's like, man, I wish it was punchline set up, boom. I wish it was that. I I, I really do. I, I I sometimes I miss those days of just going out and being like, Hey y'all do the man, have you ever did and then and what I say it, and even I, I slammed the door. And I said, I, "Man, I wish." Was done. Is it harder, <laughs> in a sense, and you take a lot more pride in being a storyteller because it's a form of therapy for you every time you hit the stage? Every single time, I take a lot. I take a lot of pride in in developing to another level in the game, and mm-hmm. me, and, and and because it comes from this place, man. Yeah. I'm. I am really like I'm writing this book called Applied Advice because people give you advice all the time, but the difference is most people don't apply what was said to them. They just get it. Yeah. You know, it's like you just hold it. No, you like a, most people are like mules that <laughs> have things. Like a mule have tools on it, but they don't know how to use them. We just they carrying just all this them. advice. Yeah, they don't know how to use them. So. DL told me, he said, man, the funniest you're going to ever be in your life is based upon how honest you want to be. Mm. So the stories are the honesty of me. And that's what I relish in, being honest on stage. You know, and 
not given. I've seen a lot of poison be given out to people in jokes. Like, hmm. the, what was the first president that you ever considered black? The first president I ever considered black? Yeah, uh, before before there was a black president, who who did you consider black? Probably Clinton. <laughs> You know what I mean? Ain't no problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, my man was accepted everywhere he went. (laughs) And why did you consider him black? Because he had rhythm and he was cool. It was effortless. It wasn't like he was trying. He just was and he was accepted everywhere. My man busted the saxophone out and he was like, oh, look at that. Somebody told you that. Somebody told you that. It's a lot of people. It's a man on Saturday night. It's a white guy that I've been seeing for 30 years. They've been playing the saxophone on Saturday Night Live. Nobody's ever considered him black. Oh, this is true. <laughs> and he, he Yo, played, he wait a minute. <laughs> somebody, but huh. somebody told you that and said, and then said this. Clinton is, Clinton is a black, is a, he said that he's a black president because he had children, outside children, yeah. and he had, he smoked weed. And he played the saxophone. Those three things don't make you black. Yeah, that's just things. But that's a dangerous concept when you can put that in somebody's head and then they run with it. It's like this. If somebody tell you that they went to a prison and they do comedy, the first thing people think is, that did you start doing comedy to protect yourself in prison? Because I've, I've had the question a thousand times. I'm like, no, nah, I was a very formidable person if I ever went to prison. Yeah. But that's a, that's something that was said to people as uh, on that Richard Pryor went to jail and that's what he did. That's on House Party. That's not the truth. That's House Party. <laughs> that's a movie. He's never been to jail. Richard Pryor was never in prison. He played him and Gene Wilder played in a prison. Played did a movie. But when somebody says it, those are dangerous things when people say those things and then the people acclimate themselves to it. So hmm. I would prefer to tell you something that's true and you gravitate towards that and you can live in an honest space yeah. versus me giving you a dangerous joke and you running with it. The authenticity of who you are and your story, is, there's so much power in it. I mean... Under all the YouTube comments, when I was looking up Domino Effect and seeing your interviews with uh, Joe Rogan, uh, when you did the Mexican God on Boots and all that stuff, as I see these comments, everybody says you're authentic, you're a great storyteller. How does it feel to see people almost validate the effort you've been putting in all these Man, years? That's the great. It's one of the. I, I, I put that up there with my children being born. I put it right there with getting released from prison and I put it up there with getting off of parole. Mm -hmm. I put it up there with graduating from something. This is like a, it's like you have, you worked for something Mm -hmm. and you achieved it. That's the light, the, the level of completion, you know, with me is a big thing. And, and, And to be noted as that, to be noted as it, you know, and I was, I was, I was really enamored when somebody said, man, you are the greatest storyteller of all time, mm. no matter the era. And I was like, wow, that was a comp. Cause I thought I would never reach Cosby or Carlin. Cause those are, those are my two. Those are the two hmm. best storytellers of all times. You know what I'm saying, and then Joey Diaz, you know what I'm saying, and when I surpassed Cosby, I was like, yo, we this is it now. Mm-hmm. This is, and it's not I'm not even done. I wanna put the 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 semen on it. Because when you said when you tell this just think of this. This is a big thing to me. Hmm. The average comedian, the longest story ever told was probably about seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Domino Effect 1 is the same story for 38 minutes. And then I go into something else. Then I tell another 25-minute story after that. 
My shortest story is seven minutes. You pride yourself on every single minute you get to tell your story. I just really, like when when I go when I go to albums, we talk about albums. I got mm-hmm. seven. I got seven albums. I got really got it's it's really thirteen albums. But I got seven that's on XM, right? All of them are hours plus. But Carlin and Cosby have a lot of thirty six minute albums. R- Richard Pryor, they have a lot of thirty thirty minutes and thirty six minutes and thirty two minute albums. I have every last one of my albums are over an hour, over an hour. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? over an hour. Every, bunch of every views special, too. Yeah. Every special is over an hour. I don't have 30 minute nothing. You know, it, 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 and people on Netflix, they putting out 36 minutes, 40 minutes, and saying that these things are special. I get it. What do you attest but that consistency me, to, though? Like you were consistently work uh, ethic over delivering in a way, not over. I think that sounds bad, but it's um you're constantly delivering uh-huh. exceptional product where the consumer is like, hey, this is a top five guy right now. Like no matter what, I've seen a lot of comments people saying top five all the time that you are one of those storytellers that you go to the show, you're going to be captivated for the entire time, and when you leave, you're gonna be thinking about things. Because of the way you tell your stories, like your work ethic is crazy. Who's helped establish that type of work ethic in your life? My mom, you know, my dad, you know, the people in my life. Hey, man, you ain't got to work for nobody. Work for yourself. And if you don't work for yourself. You got to be the best for yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't ever let yourself. Don't ever let yourself down. You know what I mean? You can't let yourself down. You know, and if you don't let yourself down, then you won't let other people down because you are the highest mark mm-hmm. in it. You know, with 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 my craft, I am the highest mark to me. I don't care about nobody else's notes. I don't care about nobody else's thoughts on it. it, it it's like if it's not good enough. That's why I say this: it's seven albums out, but it's thirteen albums total because the the ones before I put out talking loud saying something, I recorded three or four albums, and I just didn't think they had it. I just didn't, I, I wouldn't give it to the people. I didn't think they had it. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, these albums are, they missing something. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't it. Like it just wasn't so hitting would, with you, resonating in a way? It wasn't, it, it wasn't good enough. I didn't, I didn't think that it was good enough to give it to you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I, get, when I found something good enough, then I gave it to you. Like with a special, I'm not putting out nothing if it ain't good. So the standard is when he dropped, when he getting ready to drop, you ain't got to question it. That's the whole that's the whole building of it. The standard is, hey man, when Ali drop a domino effect, you already know this is gonna be good. Oh yeah, I it mean, ain't no yeah. it ain't no shakiness to it, you know. And then I don't go on, on places in an interview. I'm gonna talk about me 99 percent of the time. Yeah, I don't care about no. I don't care about what other people doing. It doesn't matter to me. Because the what I'm doing is what's important, and what I'm what I'm gonna be doing is gonna be way better than me pointing fingers or and it, it's like I, I say to myself now, most of these comics they should they should get together and start a meat company because they damn sure know how to manufacture beef. <laughs> they just make it up things to be mad about <laughs> just with each other <laughs> but, you know it's like the art of staying in your lane it's like look i have a goal to get to i have things i want to do why should i distract myself and my work ethic with all this other bs behind the scenes i mean if there's one thing that i i kept seeing a lot over besides an amazing storytelling that you got is this independent comic the domino effect one to four were independently made is that correct Independently made, um, big, uh, and then I dropped, I dropped something in between there. Is um, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Um, I dropped that in there. All that's all that stuff. Independent man, every dime of it, you know. And even when people say, "Oh, I'm, I'm independent now," yeah, you're independent now. But you've it's been cool independent, be independent now. from day one. <laughs> Uh, you know 90, what I mean? Ninety nine. <laughs> now let me now let me ask you a little bit more in depth about the independent because I 
I'm not a comic, never touched the stage. What does it really take to be an independent comic and make that work? And what are the trials behind the scenes? Like, hey, it's 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 a trial love over here where we got to really hone in. You know what I mean? Hey, man, okay, this is what it takes to be independent. Heavy contemplation before you start spending any bread. Mm. Because the money... The money that you you want you want have to have finance financial backing, which is yourself, you know, and you're gonna have to spend these dollars wisely to get the most quality out of mm-hmm. your dollar because you don't have disposable income like the network. The network, I think I'm still in debt, bro. On 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 um the first one, um it's bigger than these bars, mm-hmm. man. I haven't made any money on that special ever, like a dot, like not one dime. Still, yo, I it swear still, I thought that would make some monies, man. Because I was supposed to get that special back after it recoups what they spend. But this is what a networker do: a networker come in and spend and put the things in there. And then we spent a hundred thousand dollars in lights. What? You spent a hundred thousand dollars? Hundred thousand like lights? lights? Just okay. lights alone? And we spent another. Hundred thousand, and yo. Then they total it up. Your special cost four hundred thousand dollars to make. What? That's a lot of money. And then you gotta recoup that. But then guess what? They only showed it on the network at eleven fifty nine at night, East Coast time. Uh, that's so the for the, for the, for the people in California to see it at a decent time. But you didn't miss. The rest of the country sleeps. Yeah, and they, and you and then they show it one time, and then you call them. Hey, making y'all show it again. They they showed on Comedy Central. They showed um, it's bigger than these bars. Probably a total of four times total Come since on. it came out, and and then they took it down. Right, so then the success of Domino Effect One comes out. Then they drop it on YouTube and get and you if you look it up, they got about almost like three million views right on right now. Because you draw a massive amount of views on YouTube, man. Between all your spe- – just the dominoes one to four, you have almost like 25, 26 mil between them, which is wild. And that's not even uh, – what was that one show you did with uh, Ali Shafir? The, um, oh, uh, uh, um, this, is, this is not happening. Yes. I was on that four times. That's yeah. not even including Mexican got on boots, Mitchell, or the Mushroom. Yeah, and that doesn't even include the other interviews you do, like Rogan and, and Joey and all this other stuff where you're getting your branding out. Do you feel that for optimization and ROI purposes as someone that is doing business professionally, right, does it make more sense to kind of be independent nowadays because of the Internet and what you can do branding-wise on your own? Man, it makes sense if you have good people around you. Mm. Now, if you and if you got a good work ethic, yes, go indie. But if you don't, if you need everything handed to you, go on stay traditional. And I, and I got I'm not knocking people either way because yeah. it's like when I when I started doing stand up, right? They would say you ain't no real stand up because you got a job. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, damn it, I just started. Yeah. How the hell? What you want me to do? I just got out of prison. I got to work somewhere. I, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, real come on, dog. Gotta, you know what I mean? Hey, man, listen. <laughs> my, daughter's day, my daughter's daycare is $70 a week. They gave me $25 <laughs> for hosting the open mic. <laughs> Are you <laughs> it serious? Ain't work, bro. Come it on, ain't gonna work, man. It ain't going to work. Hey, man, this is why, you know, when I first started doing stand-up, they was like, you got to move to L.A. or New York. And... I wasn't moving to LA because it wasn't no money. Mm-mm. It wasn't any money in the in the comedy rooms. I'm not. I, I'm a stand up. I'm not an actor. I'm a stand up. I'm not. I'm not trying to be in movies and sitcoms and all that. That is that. Uh, that uh, those are actors, comedic actors. Whatever you put in front of it, those are actors. Those are different yeah. feel from comedy. And I'm and I'm and I'm hell bent on this. I'm one of these guys that say. I don't want you to think that I'm a great comic because I was in somebody's movie or I own somebody's sitcom. It has nothing to do with stand up. Not at all. And that's what people give these people the goat titles and all that because they were in a movie. Man, Anthony Anderson is a great comedic actor. He's excellent. Yeah. He's excellent. He's not DL. As a story, yeah. When you break it down as a storyteller, 
So let, let me ask you this. Is because I heard this um oh, I forgot who did it on YouTube, but somebody was talking about there's a big difference between being a comic and a comedian. Where do you lie in that conversation of a comic versus comedian? Is there a difference in your book? Um there's there's things that people just try to come up with fluff to make oh. sound. <laughs> it sound it it, 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 it sounds good. It it but say it sounded good when you said it. No, please, that please. Is a, you know, there's a difference. To the, and then, man, what's the difference? They, they, if they go into a oh, comic doors, this and that. Well, that, man, listen. There's comedic actors. There are comedians. Mm. And then there are storytellers. Then there are entertainers. Because guess what? If you try to go up against, say if you're just a regular comic, you're a comic, cool. If you try to go up against Sid, Jamie Foxx, or um, what's my man name that do all of the, he can sing and it, uh, Jam and Jay Lamont. Oh yeah, none yeah, of this, yeah. None of none of this is fair. You up there doing jokes and this man can sing For and do jokes. Yeah, come on now, <laughs> and do impressions. That's different. It's different so categories. Earthquake. Yeah. Earthquake is a monstrous comic. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking Earthquake to go up there and sing. Jamie Foxx is going, that man, Jamie Foxx will pull out a lot of, he got a lot of knives in the thing. He's funny, you know, but Damon Wayans is a monster comic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. John, John Hickman, John, um, what's my man from Living, Living Single? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Overton. um. John, his name is John, son, but he's a great comic. You just think Dick Gregory John was Hill. a monstrous comic. You know, so, but is he Andy Griffin? No. Andy mm. Griffin going to tap dance and Sammy going to tap dance. Man, okay, you doing, you doing. Somebody, somebody took my kid. Um, you <laughs> doing, you, you, I'm going to do a story. Mm-hmm. He going to tap dance while he do his story and sing. Nah, two different things. I have no tap dancing skills. I wish I did. <laughs> Is it he, Put some boots on, bro. We will learn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's an all-around entertainer. Like, like yeah. I argue with people about this. If I was to start a team, I'm going to start with a defensive player, right? Because I'm love i I'm a defense guy. I'm going to start with a defensive player. And like, like most people, this is the argument, right? Mm-hmm. Jordan... Let's go with offense. Jordan, to most people, is the greatest basketball player of all time. Okay, cool. Depends on the generation, yeah. (laughs) Would he beat Kareem? No, he wouldn't beat Kareem. Kareem going to throw all that shit across the street. Excuse me, I'm on the radio. He going to throw all that stuff across the street. But, hey, man, he's not going to beat Larry Bird Mm. one-on-one. Larry Bird going to shoot from But guess what? Guess who he's not going to beat? Magic. Why would I... I'm more of a Magic Johnson person. I want to be able to play all five positions, not just two. Dang, you different, it. yeah. Because like when and you... in comedy, in comedy, it's like that. If some people, man, they can do a lot of things. Now, when you think and about that, people... right, and you think about your skill set, and you think about how you've to a degree perfected this storytelling of who you are and your perspective of this universe, right? Are there mm-hmm. other skills you would like to add into that skill set of storytelling? Like, do you look to see, all right, I know there's a difference between joke telling and storytelling. Do you, sometimes you're like, maybe I should toss a joke in there. Or are you com- fully committed to just doing straight storytelling and being authentic, you know, 100% in, 100% out? I'm committed to telling stories the way that I grew up listening to them, the way that I've always learned everything in my life. I'm committed to giving it to people the best me versus doing everything else. But I can. That's mm-hmm. the thing because I'm I'm Magic Johnson. I started like that. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to do flips on stage. I used to I used to break bands. I used to do a bunch of things on stage. And then I got grown. I got focused. And it's things that you have to come into. Like, Jordan was a horrible jump shooter when he came into the league. Mm. And then he got hurt. 
and then he focused in on what he needed to do, just like with Kobe. Kobe, Kobe was a great this, great that, but then he said, you know something, I need to go to Houston and sit down with Hakeem Olajuwon and get some better footwork. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But see, just think about it. I'm just like uh, Hakeem. All the greats come to Houston to sit with him. Hmm. All the greats have my number, and they call my phone. Hmm. I put pen, I put pen on a lot of people. Hey man, say this. I've helped a lot of lot of lot of OGs, a lot of young ones, but they not gonna they not gonna say it, and neither am I. Yeah, there's no need. I mean, you hey, do it because you want to. That's who you are as a person. Do it because I want. Do it because I do it because I want to. And plus, I love this craft. There, I think the reason why I don't have to tell jokes and do all that because I'm still engulfed in other comics that do that. I write other. I write jokes for other people. Mm-hmm. I tag other people's stuff. So I'm still in the. I'm still in the craft with that part. But storytelling is such a different skill, and I'm just trying to get better. At that, I'm not. I'm not. The, the this is what's scary, that I'm not even good yet. Really? Because I, the, I beg to differ, man. And so do a lot of bro, other I'm people. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even, bro. And this is this is as humble as I can ever be. Yeah. I am, maybe, still ten years away from what I want to be. Ten years. How do you nail that down to ten years? You just feel that path in your mind that your soul just, it's, it, like, it's just a, it's just the it's god telling the, you like you're almost there it's this work it's the work i'm like yo man what you're like this now because i remember when i wasn't like this and i said man in 10 years they're going to forget that you ever told a joke <laughs> you know that when you say it like that and, and after getting to know you in this time frame i understand the value of that comment you know what i mean like they're gonna forget that i used to tell jokes because you've just honed into this storytelling now when you look back in life was there was there a pivotal moment or interaction or a failed venture that you were able to be like, okay, no, this is where I have to go full force now. Is that the independent or just telling stories? Cause I can tell you, I can tell you both what, 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 what struck, what struck the nerve for independency. Let's, let's, um, it, let's go with independency and then talk about uh, full force. What struck the nerve with independency, comedy central. I posted a, I posted a clip of myself on bigger than these bars and they flagged me for copyright infringement. They flagged you. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to promote the special on Comedy Central, and they flagged me for copyright infringement. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one. And I said, <laughs> what? Yeah, you can't put your own stuff up. You mean to tell me I'm back to being a prisoner? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I'm back to be somebody owning me? Oh no, that did not no. sit well with you at all. No, that didn't. That didn't. That didn't suit well with me. Man, they cut. Man, just imagine you posting something on your on your page. That's you. That's your face. That's you working. You 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 got a radio thing. They and they man, they tell you that you can't play that. You like why? That pissed me off. It's behind almost like measure, man. Like. There's no way. It's like they're not giving you a sound check when you leave. When you you try to get another job, they won't give you a sound check when you leave the radio station. Yeah. <laughs> you, right. I can't get an air check. You can y'all y'all, y'all want nobody ever know I was on the radio. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. How that's hard? Not, that's how. <laughs> how hard was that of a moment for you, like to actually full well accepting of this is what the beast is, and like yo, like as you said, I'm back to being a prisoner. Like how. How were you able to really come to terms with that and say, all right, screw it, now it's time? You know how that happened? Because you go back to you go back to the people that you idolize. Muhammad Ali. How did Muhammad Ali become the greatest boxer of all time? Yep. Yeah. So he somebody he was somebody beat him up. <laughs> and how I, did Mike Tyson how did Mike Tyson become a fierce fighter? Somebody took his bike. So, when somebody takes mm. something, when somebody puts you in a conundrum, then, then yeah. you got it's, it's 
which way are you going to really come? And this is like my dad. My dad said, when something happens to you, you have, you have, don't be mad about what's happening. Just understand this. Now you have an opportunity to prove what you are really made of in this moment. You know, I, so, that's crazy. Yeah. I can relate to that so much in my own personal journey of, you know, not being accepted. I've been in radio for 17 years now, and I'm now finally starting to feel like I'm hitting a groove. And that's crazy because I have one of those moments, bro, where it's you're asked to leave and they don't give you nothing. And you just kind of have to figure out, all right, is this what I really want to do? Do I have the passion to go through the lows and the highs and mostly lows and just really the hard work ethic, man. Like I, I respect this. I respect your story, man. I respect everything you've opened up today, man. I appreciate it. But at what point did you fully understand? Like, all right, I'm a storyteller. No more jokes. And I'm gonna pride myself on that, on that being a strong peg in who I am as an individual. When I tried, ooh, it was the it was the. This was my first time saying that I was going to try to go to the next level because it was more than just um, the decision. It's what encompasses the decision of I don't want anybody else to be able to say the same thing that I'm saying on stage. Like, I, I mm. just it, – it, it was – to go on a stage and and everybody's doing the same thing, like for real, doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. When Trump said this. The marijuana laws. This. I can't believe uh, Obama and, and the black president. My grandma. It's like, damn. It's catchy. It's trendy. It doesn't succeed. It is there for a cup of be coffee. Trendy. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I'm sitting there like I don't want to be trendy. I don't want to say what somebody else. Just was saying then, like, people, man, bro, it, it, it's like when somebody comes in and say, hey, man, is anybody doing um, these jokes tonight? What jokes? Uh, Obama jokes. Don't nobody do no Obama jokes. I'm doing that. <laughs> what? Don't nobody do no. Man, they want to hear your take on it. I don't want to give a take on something. That's that's like yeah. That's like what. That's like what they used to do when 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 the performers, light skinned performers of a lighter hue used to come down to, to, to Harlem or go to the black area and then go back and do their their version of material. So it's a, and then they hit you with the um imitation is the best form of flattery. Yeah. No it's not. Uh, yeah. No it's not. Because the lady who made the song ain't nothing but a hound dog. She ain't got the same success as Elvis had, and nor does her family. Ooh, that is a great point. Oh, man, that's a great point. You know, (laughs) but, like, when when you break it down to this part of, okay, this is how the beast operates. This is how all the individuals who are also incorporated with the beast act. I don't want this. I want to be authentic. And again, I bring it back to a lot of the comments on YouTube, right? Where I'm saying, oh man, this guy is authentic. He's a great storyteller. And you already spoke about how much that means to you, right? As we're looking at all the specials you have out, right? All the stories you have out there. For somebody that has never seen one of your stand-ups, what's the one you feel so far up until now is a window into who Ali Sadiq really is? Where you hit a groove and you're like, you know what? This is where I want people to really watch first, and they come see me in Peoria. Man, so, and I know this is gonna seem crazy, man. Not Domino really. Effect Three is my favorite. Is my like my favorite work. Yeah, it's like it really is. Domino Effect Three is my favorite work. Well, what about it stands out so much? Shit, because you it's got fun. the other three. You know what I mean? It's fun. It's fun, man. Domino Effect Three is fun, man. It's the. It was fun to perform. It was fun to say. It was fun. It was it. When I think about it, I laugh out loud at parts of it. It was just fun, man. I like, man. I, like if y'all want to get a a real glimpse into, oh man, what jail is like, man, man. This this nightmare starts in intake. I don't think I'm, if you got way to get to prison. <laughs> no, I never, I never. <laughs> my mama uh she taught sunday school and there's one time where i put on a, a jersey in reverse 
Boy, she slapped me. <laughs> my my parents, my parents were too on me, bro. <laughs> Bruh, man, it's it's a uh, it's fun, and I tell people you can start where you want to start, but when you get to three, you're gonna be having such a good time that you're gonna be mad that three is over. That's why four is two hours. You're like, yo, man, let me, let me just do, watch four. But man, and then if you watch. Me in the club, um, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. That's another fun one. It's so much. I wish I could just pick one thing, but I, it's like this. When comics ask me questions about stand up, I say, well, let me, let me, either I say, let me call you back or let me think about it for a moment. Why? Because I don't want to give you a cookie cutter answer because that that's fraudulent to me, mm. man. How do you stay good on stage? Just stay on stage. <laughs> Just keep writing. And that's so blanketed that man, I'm going to ask you, what do you want to do in comedy first? I need to know that in order to give you an informed decision. Me just giving you any type of blanket answer is actually not even caring about your question. It's not even caring about you. It's like that's like somebody going into going into the doctor's office and they say, "Here go a prescription," but you never asked me what I was feeling. Here's some, How you gonna prescribe me something that you never asked me what I was feeling? Here's some Advil. Go, you good? <laughs> like, all right, that's not go, what I hey, need take right now. Man, you good? Yeah. Like, no. Nah, even even if you listen to other interviews, your interview not gonna be like other people's interviews. You gonna have other things in the interview that that transcend that that complement other interviews mm. but this is your interview i got an interview in another in the next 15 minutes i got another interview i'm not going to talk to them the same way that i'm talking to you gonna because be i'm not going to feel the same way in 15 minutes and then they probably going to ask me something that's going to probably um pick me off <laughs> they may hit then, you with the jokes <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I tell the, I tell the worst thing. Now the joke thing is fine, but I just, I can, that's something I can explain. But when somebody hit me with it, with the man, I'm telling you, the joke, the, the, the interview in Washington, it's like you can go online and look at it. You mm-hmm. can see the whole room turn when the dude asked me. So, when you was in prison, you did you do jokes to defend yourself? I said, all right. <laughs> I said, bro, if I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking, if. I was a six foot four man standing here. Hmm. Would you ask me that same question? Probably, probably not. That, I know you wouldn't. Have. Yeah, I mean, but I say, but I, and I say, I say, bro, I'm the most dangerous person in this room and in most rooms. E. Yeah, I say, yeah, in most rooms because that's the whole thing. You don't understand. You understand. You are a civilian to me. And I said, baby, you're a civilian. Mm-hmm. And I get in, if I get in mode, if I get in any type of mode, bro, you got to think of how far I'm going to go with this. That's why you got to be respectful, interview. man. You know what I mean? Like, at at the end of the day, like, we could run this interview, and I can, I can ham hock and center in on life in prison and all this, but go watch the specials. You talk about that in depth. You talk about stories, journeys, you know, all these things. There's no need to keep bringing that up, man. Like, I think the the cool thing, not the cool thing, but the thing I respect the most about our conversation right now, and I got one more question. I'll let you do your thing, brother. But I I think it is super awesome of how you have this passion to be authentic and how much you really do love your craft. And you could tell when you're performing, man. Like, for those, we were talking about the domino effect. They're all on YouTube. You could go watch them. And the fact that you have this authenticity, the fact that you have this passion, I got to ask you, man, with these conversations, whenever I talk to anybody, I feel like each of us are a story. We're a book. We have our, our gold nuggets. When your story is completely done, man, what is, what is the gold nugget you hope somebody can take from your story, from everything? What's something you hope people can just look at you, laugh at things, but then really understand this about you? I hope people take from me at the end of the at the end of their day. Whatever position that you are in now, you won't end up there. And you are not your mistakes. You can overcome anything that you choose to if you focus in and you really believe in that. And I think a lot of times 
people have to just believe in themselves. And sometimes they don't they don't have a a model to look at somebody who really believes in themselves, like really believes in themselves. Not somebody else believes in them, or somebody else catapults them to to something. Or that's how you get all these drug abusers and people who just put, forced them to, to position. I'm a person that really believed in myself and I had nothing to believe in at the time but me. Mm. So if they going to take anything, you are not your mistakes. Where you were is not what you're going to end up. And if something bad happens to you, it's the same as something good happening to you. If you can, if you can relish in something good, you can relish in something bad. Mm, I like that. I like that. A and lot. I think a lot of times people forget that part. That hey, man, this, this all you talk about is the is the what the the bad that happened to you. Something good happened to you too. And you get and when something bad happens, like my father says, now you have the opportunity to really show who you really are. Are you gonna fold? Are you gonna bend? Are you gonna stand strong? <laughs> you know, I love that, man. That's um, thank you for giving me time today, dude. Um, like honestly, from man to man, you dropped some gold gold nuggets on me, man. Things I personally am dealing with right now that sometimes it's hard to look at the silver lining and really look at it, man. And thank you for just dropping some wisdom on me today, man. I appreciate you. Oh man, man, the pleasure, the pleasure is all mine. Anything, brother, that you was, that you got out of this conversation, man, that came from the creator, man. I was just a vessel. Anything, and I hope you remember all the good and anything the bad that you that you got from it, that came straight from me. And I, ain't, the creator, ain't had nothing to do with that one. I hey. just, I was just didn't, I wasn't, I didn't convey it well enough yet. That's hey, all, brother. You, you know what they say, bro? God is good. You know what I mean? All the time. Before we go, just want to say, uh, Ali, where can we get more information for the uh, tour coming to town and watch all your specials and just get in more stuff about you? Where can people go? Man, y'all can go to alisadiq.com. Just spell it right, A-L-I-S-I-D-D-I-Q. Man, all of my information is on there. You can go to my website, which is the same. Or you can you can check me out on Instagram, which is the same, alisadiq.com, or Go to Facebook. I don't even know what my Facebook is, but it, but people be on there. So it's got to be Ali Sadiq. You know what I'm saying? It, it, <laughs> yeah, just type his name in. You're going to find it. He everywhere. Yeah, you yeah, know, man. everywhere <laughs> and including September 14th here at the Civic Center Theater. Ali Sadiq, I got a story to tell. Get your tickets right now at Ticketmaster.com. Independent, authentic, and an amazing storyteller. See, I got it right. <laughs> man, thank you, man. Thank you hey. very much, man. You have a blessed day, bro. Ali, thank you so much. I know I went over a time, but man, oh, no, man I can listen to good. you talk all day, bro. Thank you. I really do mean it, yeah. man. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, bro. Hey, have thank a great you. day. All right, man? You too, bro. All right, all right, peace out. Peace.